up everybody, my name is Tabu, and right now what's going on in my world is taking a little break, Black Eyed Peas, we're gonna take a little hiatus to, to work on personal projects. Um, you know, every time we have uh, an album cycle come to an end, we take um, a break from, from time to time. We did that in 2006, now we're doing it again in uh, 2011. I've been fortunate enough to uh, have an opportunity to DJ and to perform and to start my DJ tours in Europe. I'm gonna be doing that in the next couple weeks and next year I'm gonna be focusing on that. Um, movies and also working on a Spanglish solo project for the Latin market. Um, it feels great, especially being a Mexican American from East LA. Being surrounded by a lot of negativity and violence and you know things that that uh, come with living in the inner cities. I found music and my friendship with Will I Am and Apple the App to be the catalyst for, for positivity, for creating music for the world. And I feel like, um, you know, that just kept me uh, with my head straight. My family being very supportive, my mom giving me the opportunity to follow my dreams. Um, that was what kept me in line and, and I think that it's just a natural uh, progression of, of positivity. My dancing began in, when I was five years old and it started because of my grandmother. My grandmother was the one that inspired me. She was the biggest motivator in my life to go after my dancing dream. Um, since I was a kid, I used to dance at backyard parties, quinceañeras, and I started. it started with Spanish music. Um, then when I first saw hip hop, um, at the age of 10, I fell in love with breaking, fell in love with popping, locking, uh, b-boying. And from that point on, you know, it just uh, progressed to freestyle dancing. Um, I was inspired by people like the Nicholas Brothers, Mop Tops, to the Scheme Team, to the Soul Brothers, to uh, Mission Impossible, to Lake One, Lake Two, Trouble T-Roy. The inspiration goes on and on. But, uh, you know, and the way I adapted my style was a uh, big fan of Bruce Lee, martial arts. When I first started, I started incorporating martial art form. Um, with my dance style, which was freestyle, more footwork, more more flash on, on the feet, uh, popping, and it just incorporated all that stuff to create the, the magnetic style. Uh, well, it all started in a couple months ago, um, maybe six months ago, I was in Europe and I had did an appearance just to host the gig. And the guy hit me up and he said, yo, do you DJ? I was like, nah, but you know, I really respect the DJ community. They're like, yeah, you should, you should DJ. You should try picking it up and learning it. So I called my boy Raul and I was like, Raul, you know, I, I really want to tap into, uh, cause I, I love song selection. I love to be able to play songs that make people feel good. It's nostalgic, whether it's hip hop or, or R and B or, uh, you know, um, 80s music or house or electro, whatever it is, I, I feel like I'm I'm good at my selection. He said, you know, you should pick up you should pick up some CDJs, and I was like, all right, cool. I'll start with CDJs, and I noticed that David Guetta and a lot of the the DJs that are established use CDJs, so I started with that, and then my boy Apple. Um, usually he, ha he has these things called boom boom room where it's like a little after party um, after a gig or whatever and you know it'll be like a couple band members and uh, you know Fergie, me, Will, uh, we'll just be hanging out in his room ordering room service or whatever and he usually DJs. So this time he didn't want to DJ so I picked up you know I started DJing and I started mixing and it's kind of like it felt good, it felt right to me and, and I, I fell in love with it so I, I give the outermost uh, respect. I say that Apple inspired me. He was the one that allowed me to be on his DJ equipment. Um, and I would say that the style that I use is more a performance. Um, I have video that goes behind uh, what I'm doing on, on uh, while I'm mixing. Um, also, you know, there's a dance element um, during the performance. I also do a couple Black IP songs. So it's, it's a whole package. It's just not me. It's just not me playing uh, music, it's also a performance as well. I use a Nexus 900 mixer and I use the CDJ 2000. Um, yeah, those, those are the greatest.
Well, the studio is, is something that I like to call my man cave because it, it separates me from being at home. It's kind of like my own little world. When I started talking about building a studio, my wife, and she said, you know, you need to establish your, your music away from the house because if the kids are sleeping and you want to turn your music up, you need to have your own world. So I went into uh, kind of like designing this with my boy Raul, who's my, my engineer. And I said, Raul, you're going to be the, the, the studio manager. You gotta make this right because if I'm gone, I need you to to uh, to make this happen for me. So we started designing it, and we said we wanted a Zen type of feeling, warm, um, but still modern. Um, also, I'm a I'm a toy man. I love toys. I love collecting toys from all over the world, and I wanted to add that flavor and also uh, sexy. You know, just a sexy feel when you walk in. You're like, all right, this is a sexy feeling. It's everything is very clean, very pristine. Um, you know, I have vintage keyboards like this Rhodes. There's a, a little bit of vintage, but more modern. A little bit of the accolades that I've gotten, Grammys and, and American Music Awards. But it's like, it's, it's a good feeling when you walk in here. And when people walk in, they're like, wow, I couldn't imagine that this would be in a garage. Because literally, this was part of my garage. And I converted it into my own little man cave. A couple of my favorite toys for my studio, well one being the Black IP experience, um, it's the new game that came out for Xbox Connect and usually you know we'll, we'll set up the Xbox, people come in here and have dance dance offs. So another thing is the Notorious B.I.G. doll, one of my biggest inspirations, great MC, um, try to collect as many of my, my heroes in the hip hop game as possible, uh, so that's B.I.G. And then the MPC, Akai 2000. And that's how I started producing. Um, I started with the MPC, and I got inspired by uh, people like Jay Dilla, rest in peace. When I saw him using it, uh, we had a, a studio session with him, and I was just blown away by his, the way he, he truncated his drums, the swing he had um, off the MP, and also DJ Premier. He was, uh, he's a big MPC guy, so uh, you know, I got inspired by that, and also our, our DJ uh, back in the days, his name was DJ Motivate. Um, he taught us how to produce, and I know that it's not as as uh, useful now to a lot of producers, but I still have it in my heart. I love the way it feels. Um, I love the pads, everything about it, the old school feel. So my MPC will always be with me. Well, some of the music that I've been creating have been uh, songs with producers like uh, DJ Homicide, Keith Harris, Mario Marchetti, songwriters like um, uh, Juanes, who's a, who's a big Latin star, to Raito and Sebastian J. I just did a song with Paulina Rubio that came out two days ago. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really focus on the Latin market because that's something that is, is very dear to me. You know, I, I just did the Latin Grammys and I feel like that I've been embraced by my Latin community and I feel like I deserve, or my, the Latin people deserve an album from me so that's what I'm, I'm focusing on, more on the Latin rhythm. The creative process, uh, there's really no formula. Sometimes it comes from a melody that I put on my iPhone and then we'll put a beat to it. Or sometimes I'll listen to a beat and I'll find a uh, a certain lyric or a verse that I'll put to it um, or just humming something like you know um, just something in my head and I'll lay it down and then they'll construct the beat to whatever I'm humming so there's no really no uh, big um, uh, formula to it I love them I love the the fact that they bump they're they're pretty portable you know, I could transfer them from here to from this studio into my to my home. Um, they look they look very sleek, and I can't wait to continue pumping them. Um, don't let nobody say you can't do it. Um, the fact that I had my two good friends, Will I Am and Apple D App. Um, really believe in me as an individual when sometimes my own family were like, no, you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Um, I needed to follow my own dream and I was blessed. 
I was very lucky and fortunate that I made it. I would just say, you know, stick, stick to your guns. Whatever you want to do in life, do it. You know, believe in yourself, believe in, in your dream, believe in your craft, and uh, much success. The book, Falling Up, is uh, the first memoir out of the Black IP camp. And um, I wanted to tell my story. I needed to let people know that, yeah, you could be on top of the game one minute. One bad decision could take you out of the game really quick. And thank God I made it. Um, but this is just a, if somebody picks up this book and gets a sense of hope or inspiration, um, that's kind of what I'm trying to relay with, with, the, with the message with this book. Keep it on the positive. The most annoying, uh, do you guys, have you, does anybody know about the soccer games, the World Cup? Yeah. What are those things called? The horn or Fuzelas, right? Fuzelas. Fuzelas. Annoying. Man, I hate that. And that's like the most, and when it's thousands of people doing it, because we did the World Cup, and when I heard that, I was just like shaking in my, my seat. It's just the most annoying thing you could ever hear in your life. Fuzelas? What is it called? Vuvuzelas. Vuvuzelas, yeah.